Welcome to Lesson 3 of the TIGSI training course. Here we'll be talking about how to use the TIGSI database. Okay, let's start with a blank app. And at the app level, we're just going to set the swatch to be blue for the default look and feel. And we're going to have all the pages rendered in one HTML file. Okay, let's go to our default screen. We're going to change the swatch to blue. We're going to name it Login Screen. And we're also going to turn off the footer. We don't really need that. And we're going to set the caption to be Login. Let's create another screen called the Chat Screen, where we'll display messages. We go to Add New Page and set it here. And then we're going to also um, change the swatch and change the title so it says Chat. And we'll also remove the footer element. We don't really need that. Now let's switch to TIGSI database. It's on your accessible from your dashboard page. Let's create a new database called Messages. Here you can see the database ID, which will be automatically mapped into your application. You can see here that we have um, various tabs like collections, users, files, settings, and reports for accessing different aspects of databases. Let's go back to collections. Now we'll create a new collection uh, we'll, let's, by clicking new, and we'll call it messages because it holds messages. We'll also need to add some fields for it. We'll create a username field and a user ID field. And a field that actually holds the message text called text, I guess. That makes sense. Now we have fields for the creator and the text of the message. Okay, now let's create some users for this app. Uh, I think two will be fine. You could do this as a part of the UI in the app itself. I'm just going to use the database um, console to do this. Now that we have our two users, we can move on to the switch over to the UI design to actually connect it to the database. Once we're in the login screen, we can add our two inputs and a button. Now the first input will be for the login. Type will be text. And for the second field, it will be password. And we'll use a special password type that hides the characters as you're typing them. We'll also change the actual JavaScript name for the login and also for the password, so we can use them later. Now we'll go to the button and change its text to lo say login. Now let's save and quickly check the preview. There it is. Uh, we can type in some characters, the login and the password. Okay, now let's create a database service. So we'll go to create new database service. And you can see Messages is available as a database, the one that we created with TIGSI database. And we'll choose the Login, Create, and List services that we'll import. Now let's go over to Data. We'll choose Service. And we'll choose our Message Login Service. And we'll add that in and give it a name login service and then let's edit start editing the mappings first we'll edit the request and for that we'll map the login field text to username and the text for the password to password okay now for the response we have um, two responses an ID and a session token let's create a variable a local storage variable where we can store the ID and then we're going to create another local storage variable um, and uh, we'll use that for um, the success we'll, you'll see in a minute all right so that's stored now let's go down to the events login service let's in case of an error let's have run a simple JavaScript to alert that something went wrong all right in the event of success for this um, service, we want to use the um, local storage variable we created before. And we want to set it to the value of the login field. And then finally, uh, we want to navigate to the chat page if upon successful login. 
let's save and check the preview now. Uh, we'll do a login and just make sure it actually navigates to the chat page. It does. Next we're going to create the UI for the chat screen. So let's go. We're going to add a wrapping panel first. So let's drag that over. And we should make it a little taller. And we're going to add in an input and also a button to pro so that we can add messages. So let's give an appropriate name to the text box for inputting and a class name. And we'll call it message. For the Turn on the placeholder. And for the button, we're going to get rid of the text and just have a right arrow. OK, and after we're done with that, we can move on to actually, uh, underneath this, we'll put, be putting a, a panel to actually display the messages that we have. So we create the panel, uh, make it a little taller, of course, and then we're going to drag over three labels to represent various parts of the message. This will be the message date, and we'll give an appropriate class name. And then next, we're going to drag over the message author. So let's type that in and set up a class name for any styling later. And finally, the message text. We'll drag one more label in and give it an appropriate name and set it up for styling. At this point, we can head over to the data section and we're going to create a new service, a message list service, by using one of our imported services from Tixi Database. Let's give it a more usable name. And we're going to edit the mapping, which will just be the response because it's listing. So the first step is to map the response root over to the, um, the main panel element that contains everything. So let's get everything set up for that. And then you can do the mapping of the individual parts of the message, one at a time. And that's pretty clear how you should do this. And text to text. All right, let's save. And we're going to add another one more service, this time the message create service. All right, so we add it from our already imported services, uh, give it our own name, and then we head over to edit the mapping. Now, when we edit the mapping, all we have to do is uh, map the request parameters over to the appropriate UI elements. And notice our use of the local storage variables here. To set these services in motion, we're going to have to go over and uh, find, as a last step, to add an event to the to the button, so that when you click on it, it'll invoke the message create service. And that's it. Let's save and switch over to preview to give the whole thing a preliminary check. Uh, let's log in and type in the classic hello world message and then we'll see if the shows up yep to flesh out the app further let's add some extra event handling so we want to what we want to do is to in case that we've successfully created a message we want to invoke the list service so that uh, everything is updated and we also want to handle the case where there's some kind of error in creating a new message so we just add in a simple JavaScript alert now let's see how everything works in the preview let's log in and add a slightly different message but not too different and see if it updates Yep, there you go. Okay, let's further improve the appearance a little by uh, first if we need to assign CSS class names to the two panels. And then we're going to add some CSS. Let's create new CSS 
I'll give it uh, the name styles and we'll paste in some pre-prepared styles that we have. Let's also change the chat screen so that it, as soon as it's shown it invokes the list service so that it's updated as soon as you look at it. And let's save and switch over and see how that works. Uh, log in and there it is. Uh, while we're here we can also just add another message just to see it update. Boom. Next we're going to add some JavaScript um, helpers to parse the date and do some other things. Uh, first let's create a file to hold it and um, we're going to paste in some already existing functions to parse the date to start and stop updating the web service and a logout function that cleans up afterwards. Let's go to data mapping now and we're going to add a parse date helper to the message date field. So we go here, then we click on the add JS button for the appropriate there for the appropriate field, and we just type in the helper function here. Then you hit save and return. Next, let's go to the events panel and uh, start using our start updating and uh, stop updating helper functions. Basically, the idea here is to set up the chat screen so it's while it's showing it's continuously updating so we'll run JavaScript and put in that helper function and then uh, when it's no longer when it's hidden we want to of course we want to stop updating okay let's save now and switch to preview and see what we have now. So we'll log in and we'll open another instance of the preview window and we'll sign in as a different person to show how this continuous update allows you to send messages to each other. So a message from Sam and there you see it appears on both at the same time. Let's take a care of a detail before we go further. We want to clean the message field as soon as it's sent. So we go into data, we go to message create service, uh, we want to select the success event and set property and we want to select message field and leave it blank. Now let's go to design. We're going to add a logout button right here. It will be without any text let's put in log we'll call it logout and um, it'll have the just an X for deletion and then we're gonna go into events and we're gonna invoke that helper event we created for logging out before as something that's assigned to this button and we save it before we go on let's add something to the login screen so that um, it checks for local storage for the current username and current user ID to check to see if you're logged in or not. The idea is that um, even after reloading the app when you have this set up this way it will um, you'll still it'll know that you're logged in. So let's create the JavaScript for this on page show. Here you can see checking to see if those local storage variables are holding that information. And then um, if those are true, you can just go to the chat page. Let's save now and jump over to preview. Uh, we're going to log in and let's check out our logout button. Oh, we're logged out. One last thing we're going to go over is um, changing the sorting order of the messages. So we go into the request tab for the uh, message list service and in Tigza you can add a sort parameter to these services and by putting the minus sign in there it actually sorts in reverse. And let's look at the preview and there you can see it. That's it for lesson three. Thanks for watching.